Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube. Another week, another roundup, and whoo, we got some good ones this week. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button. If you're returning, thanks for coming back. Now, let's dig in. Reza Rad's got a blog post where he is walking through the new workspace experience and comparing this with the old workspace experience. So if you're not familiar, there is a new workspace experience that is in public preview right now with inside of the Power BI service. It is slated to become generally available within the May timeframe. That's what the release notes say. And so right now we're in this weird transition between the old and the new. And so there's some things you should know about between those two and Reza is going to get you up to speed on what these new items are, what you can do with them, and some things to look out for during this transition period. If you are curious about these new workspaces, maybe you haven't heard about it, or maybe you just wanna you know, make sure that you understand what they are, be sure to check out the link for this blog post down in the description below. Megan Lagoria's got a blog post where she looks at how many gateways do you need for your Azure BI architecture? The interesting thing about this is that there are a couple of different gateways that may come into the picture, and she walks through the differences between these, primarily the on-premises data gateway for Power BI, the Power Platform, those items, or the gateway used for things like Azure Data Factory and Azure ML. She walks through the differences between these two gateways, as well as looking at how many of these gateways do you actually need. Some of that depends on the data sources. Some of it depends on, you know, how many of the different types of data sources that you're connecting to. Do you have multiple databases for that given data source? So there's a lot of factors that come into play with that. She does a great job of walking through that in this blog post. So if this is something you're curious about or something you've struggled with, definitely check out the blog post. As always, links down in the description below, along with links for all the items in this week's roundup, including some bonus items. So go check it out. We got a new blog post on the Power BI blog talking about bulk operations with inside of the admin portal. Specifically, this is looking at bulk operations with the new workspace section inside of the admin portal. So if you are a global admin or you're a Power BI service administrator, you can get access to this. Be sure to check out the workspaces. This will show all the workspaces with inside of your tenant and it will allow you to do certain operations inside of it, such as adding users, deleting items, recovering, things like that. And Kai does a great job of walking through those options for you and also calls out an item to be aware of in terms of these operations only work with that new workspace experience. So you're gonna wanna filter out the old workspaces and then do those operations that you need to on the new workspaces. So great stuff for admins. Check out the blog post down below. We got an announcement for the use of service principles with the Power BI APIs. You may ask, what does this mean? This means that I don't actually have to use an actual user account to be able to interact with the Power BI service from an API perspective. The big win for this is if you're doing Power BI embedded. It's also a win if you're doing any type of automation with the Power BI APIs as well. So from a Power BI embedded perspective, instead of having to use that actual user account that we labeled as the master account and had to assign that Power BI Pro license to it, I don't need to do that anymore. I can create an app registration inside of Azure Active Directory, assign the right permissions, make sure that I enable that through the admin portal for certain groups, make sure it's assigned correctly, and then I can use that service principle for my embedded application. So that means I just have my actual app ID and my secret and then go to town with embedding awesome content from Power BI. I know I've gotten a lot of questions on the embedded side about like, wait, how do I get this to work if I have MFA enabled on my user account? And the answer was that you really couldn't because there wasn't another option, but now there is that option of using that service principle. So if you've struggled with MFA type options, this will get you around that. Did somebody ask for export to PDF? <gasps> it is now in the service. Well, or at least it will be by February 10th. So hopefully by the time you watch this, it is enabled in your tenant. 
So you can now export to PDF reports inside of Power BI. This is great, everyone's been asking for this. So this now will allow you to easily print off items and it'll be a better experience than just printing from the web browser. Chris Finland does make a point in the blog post to say that everyone's asking for the ability to maintain filter selections and or bookmarks, things of that nature. And he mentions that that will be coming very shortly. In this blog post, it also calls out the fact that you can now do on-demand email subscriptions from within the UI as well. So that's pretty cool. But be sure to check out the blog post for all the details on these two items down in the description below. All right, what was your favorite item? Was it something I covered this week? Was it maybe something I didn't cover this week? Go ahead and let me know down in the comments below. As for me, my favorite item this week, I've gotta go with service principles for the APIs because I love the developer items. And this has been a long time coming for this item, so I'm really happy to see it out there. But I wanna hear from you, so let me know down below. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching, keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.